good. Beer is good. Beer is good. And stuff. What's going on, everybody? I'm Preston. This is John. We're the Beer Chasers, and welcome to episode number five. Today we're here at Mermaid Juice in Mount Dora, Florida for the Christmas in September event. Yeah, so the event is going to feature old age Christmas beers. We're going to have Santa Claus, live music. John and I brought a couple Christmas beers up here for the tasting segment. Man, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I've heard a lot about Dano and the Mermaid Juice. I'm just excited just to be here, man. All right, so stick around and check it out. Beer Chase is on the town, and we're here at Mermaid Juice with Dano Nero. Dano, how's it going? We're good. We're good. Thanks good. for coming. No, no problem. problem. Thanks for having us. So we've looked around, and it's kind of it's kind of different. It's an antique store and a bar. Can you talk a little bit about kind of how these two things have merged together? Two hobbies, man. You hear that cliche saying where it's uh, find something you love doing and you never work a day in your life, and beer is one of those things that uh, just took over. My wife and I have been hobbyists for antiquers for 20 plus years, so. It's kind of a natural thing if I had extra room, so let's do the antique store and then put kegs in. Uh, the goal was probably 150, 200 bottled beers, and we're about 100 now with 17 taps, so we're getting there. Uh -huh. so when we first opened, it was about 20, 30. And, um, so we do really good. It's uh, We sell quite a bit of antiques, but we definitely, uh, our bread and butter is beer and wine. How'd you get the name Mermaid Juice? That's a unique name. It comes off our kettles. Uh, I, I need to know this name, but if you look at all the fermenters, bright tanks that have that upgrade for wineries and breweries, uh, and I worked in a winery for like six years and worked in some breweries, but they have that orbital grind. So all my kettles, when I upgraded, they came and uh, they look like scales from a distance. A friend of mine I haven't seen in 10 years shows up and he was like, dude. What's up with the mermaids? <laughs> we had named the brewery a ton of times and uh, it just never stuck and then I was like, the mermaids. So that became the cliche, hey come over and you want to brew with the mermaids and then uh, one day, I think it was my wife or another friend, someone was like, dude, the mermaid juice and that was that. So it comes off those little orbital grinds, you've seen them on southern tier mm -hmm. tap handles and they're all over fermenters, and, but that's it. Uh, so mermaid juice typically has a lot of rotating beers is what I hear. I try to change things up. I've kind of gotten into a pattern on a couple beers, but uh, any kind of that stick around for any a period of time. I've kept the Sea Dog Blue, which uh, kind of uh, I sell tons of that crowd beer. pleaser. Yeah, <laughs> it is a crowd pleaser. Um, I'm not gonna knock them. They're you know it's like Sam Adams Shipyard. Those guys have done instrumental. Yeah, they're big. Well, they've they paved the way for the craft beer, and, and people can get snobby like New Belgium and. Sometimes I catch myself doing that, but you have to remember those guys were surviving in the 90s when all these small startups were coming and just failing, and uh, they somehow had their their system together. So I mean, they've been around a long time, and so I sell that one. Um, I keep the Lacey Magnolia Southern Pecan on. Sounds much good. Love Leslie and her husband; they're awesome. So uh, the main event today is the Sitting with the Santa event. Yeah. Um, how did this event come together exactly? Last year, a good friend of ours, his name is Tom, he's a resident uh, beer guru. He loves beers, crazy beers like I do, and he looks like Santa. We come to find out he's one of the premier Santas in Florida. Sweet. Uh, he's got an H and everything, it's kind of cool. But uh, So November to the January, we won't see him. He'll be down in like the Macy's and the Sacks. Uh, he does like the best stores, he's one of the best in the state. So we started talking, long story short, because um, we just had a baby two days after I opened this store. And he said, I'll get in here, you know, dress the baby up, I'll dress up, but we got to do it sometime in the summer because I'll be gone during the, the holiday season and uh, let's get pictures. And I said, okay, and that just, the wheels started turning and then I had a bunch of beers from last year that were Christmas beers and uh, just took off. Do you plan on doing anything else throughout the year so that you kind of have some success and you're getting some people to come out for these events? Or? Yeah, we do. We have different things. Like, you know, in Christmas, last year we did a, a Charles Dickinson's Christmas and uh, did the traditional chestnuts roasting with an open fire, did the goose, uh, had live music. Uh, yeah, uh, I kind of just like this. I'm just sort of winging everything. Like every six weeks we try to have like really good music here. We do a mount back. Yeah. And uh, there's random weird nights, like sometimes during the week where 150 people just come in. I really don't have to do events sometimes. The word's getting yeah. out there that 
And in this area, really, no one's offering the kind of beers and selections that we are. Definitely. Um, back to the beer, actually. What is the uh, story with the Santa's Wet Sticky Candy Cane? Uh, that would make me laugh when I first heard that. I started home brewing. Uh, flashback to early 90s. I started bartending in, in when I was 18, so that's what got me through college. And uh, I just, like all of us, I was craving something deeper and darker than Guinness. And that was about the craziest I could find. A small little brew pub uh, manufacturing brewery in downtown Nashville opened up Highland uh, Brewing on 2nd Avenue and I tasted their beers. They were putting IPAs out in 1991 and it seemed like I was the only one who was like, yeah! <laughs> so I hung out with them as much as I could. I, I became really good friends with them and I watched the place come and go. And uh, so I started brewing because I was doing wines for about six years and I was adding chocolate, habaneros, vanilla to, to wines that I was, you know, cultivating and uh, I had winemakers go, you, you can't add this stuff, this isn't wine. I was like, why, why not? And they're like, well, it's the yeast, the grape, that's it. And I was like, says who? And they're like, no, that's just the way it is. And then a good friend of mine from Oregon who just moved down and became the uh, the winemaker, he said, listen dude, he goes, you make beer, have you ever made beer? And I was like, I've been really close, I want to. And he said, dude, do it, you'll be a rock star if you make beers the same way you're making this this wine, whatever they want to call it. So that's where it took off. 2002, we started brewing. One of the first beers we did was a 12% uh, Charlie Papasan clone, and we had to even change it up. It was the goat scrotum. And we added like a pound of ginger to five gallons and uh, just absolutely went ridiculous. And after a year of aging it, then we started cracking them open and it was incredible. So the Santa's Big Wet Sticky Chocolate Candy Cane comes from a good friend of mine, Blair. Uh, oh, Blair Whitaker, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, know. I think he threw the name out and I was like, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, he has good names. It's a chocolate peppermint stout that we do, and we add chocolate to it. Yeah, so some of your beers, you've actually had some recognition. Like you've, uh, you've kind of had the the eye of Dogfish and uh, Larry Bell of Bell's Brewery. You want to yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I got to meet Larry Bell's. I think 2006, 2007. He was passing through town, and uh, he got to try my pumpernickel rye pale ale at 12, 13 percent. It was a pumpernickel recipe I'd been working on for years. Um, and it was a porter IPA, around 60 to 80 IBUs. I told him it was higher than that, and he just said, no, it's not. So I'm not going to argue with Larry Bell. So and, porter uh, IPA, so it's just a really hopped up porter? It tastes like pumpernickel bread, but just dark and dank <laughs> and meaty, like we love it. Uh, that's kind of, I've, I've been saying this for 12, 13 years, that my flagships would be 10%. You know, around the eight to ten percent, and everyone said, "You can't." That's not how it works. And I was like, "Well, watch me." I just never have gotten the brewery open, but you see other people, their bigger beers are selling. They're they're more recognized now. Their flagships are becoming their six and eight percent and above. Well, look at Stone. That is yeah. what they do. That they're is known for doing the that. The bigger, the better. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Go big or go home. <laughs> yeah. And I've always believed that. There's uh, plenty of yellow fizzy beer out there. Yep. Yeah. So you also do uh, some bottle sharing events, you know, that not really yep. part of Mermaid Juice per se, but you right. also are open to kind of Yeah, we let people shares. show up and uh, bring what they want. Uh, there's a pretty good group of home brewers that are here in town, and they uh, bring in samples of theirs. And I mean, it's, I've had a lot of home brewing. I mean, it's really amazing the stuff that's just coming out of five-gallon buckets and cardboards. Uh, amazing. That's one of my favorite things to do is go to some home brew meetings and bring my beer, share it with people, see what they think, and then... Get their beer tasted too. It's and, great. and most of them are yummy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, oh, they're almost always good. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. They're. Uh, yeah. It's like making homemade ice cream. You're gonna. You're gonna make something better on your deck than uh, the mass produced, and that's kind of where this whole surge is just coming from. So every second Sunday we do the bottle share, and. Uh, and that's open to anybody. Anybody can show yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. You show up, and I mean. What time? Uh, five o'clock ish. I set it for five, everyone kind of shows it's up. It's never strict at home brewers, yeah. man. We're all kind of just... About 15 to 25 of us, and I mean, we've had Hanapus, we've had Pliny the Elders, we've had Dark Lord, we've had some of the rarest uh, new Glarus beers, that you, can't, you know, stuff you can't get in this area. Just show up, and then, I mean, if you bring a bottle, you're in. So you get a, you know, you get a sample, and yeah. the end of it, you're in, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. I hear one of your favorite things to do is, uh, like, a cellaring and aging beers. Yeah, I guess that came from the wine background of really getting into the Reds, the Bordeaux, uh, which is what I'm named after, the Dano. Mm -hmm. uh, 
It was named after the Bordeaux grape. So as a as a wine person, you can taste them and go, well, it needs about four or five years. And some of them age like 20, 30, hundreds of years, and then that's when they're at their peak. Yeah. Um, so I started doing that. Like, Shipyard Smash Pumpkin Pugsley Series two years ago, I tasted that and I was like, two years. It needs two years before you even tap it or open the bottle. And I just have this weird knack for going, okay, I think this is going to need three or four years. I think this is going to need a couple more years. Um, and that's the fun experimentation too. Mm -hmm. Let's see how I took a 60 minute for seven years. Now I lost its hops. Yeah, see, that's I hear. You have a controversy opinion on uh, aging IPAs. I hear some guys, yeah, it, IPA is over a month old. They dump it. Sure. So what do you think about that? Uh, <laughs> we all have opinions. I mean, I don't turn. I, my philosophy is I turn them all up. I don't turn any down. I'll sit here right now and drink a natty light with you. I don't care. <laughs> uh, what do I prefer? You know. So it's just subjective. I like the malty, hot floral in the nose. Uh, if it's super, super bitter and unbalanced, I'm just not into that. Well, Dan, I appreciate your time. We're looking forward to the event tonight. Thank you. Uh, have fun. In closing, is there anything you want to tell the beer chaser chater audience? Uh, I appreciate you very much. I'm glad the guys came out. I saw a couple of their shows, and I think they're good people. And uh, just keep drinking good beer, and don't be too snobbish out there. Yeah, All right, man. Cool, man. Thanks so much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Again, Mount Mermaid Juice in Mount Dora, Florida. Yay! It's supposed to smell like that. <laughs> All right, beer chase is on the town here with none other than the Santa Claus. Santa, how are you doing? Ho, 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 and a Merry Christmas. We're sitting here at Mermaid Juice in Mount Dora, setting with Santa in September, and Santa's doing very well. Now, speaking of that, it is September, and here we are having christmas theme events. Does this not drive you crazy? Every year, it's getting earlier and earlier. Well, that depends. 365 days a year or 366 days a year. That's Santa time. All right. So, man, after Mrs. Claus, the elves, the reindeers, all of them go to sleep, what's your favorite beer style and beer brand to go to? Favorite style is wet. None of this dehydrated instant stuff. All right. I do not like mass-produced beverages. I'd like to have, in this case, a nice little bourbon... Uh, beer, I do enjoy my IPAs, but when I really want to kick back and really want to settle down, I would really like to have a blithering idiot from Pennsylvania. Santa likes the good stuff. I always enjoy, our Santa always enjoys the good stuff. All right. Likes a good scotch ale, as in scotch ale. A nice milk stout will make it a nice afternoon with a wee bit of ice cream in it during the summer. So what you're saying is the kids shouldn't be leaving cookies and milk, it should be cookies and milk stout. <laughs> Definitely. Milk stout, the creamier, the better. Alright, final question before we let you get going. Is it too late to uh, turn around some of the bad deeds I've done to get some nice presents this year? Well, that depends upon how many bottles and cases of milk stout. Blithering Idiot is awaiting Santa when he brings your presents this year. Well, however many it takes, there will be there for you, Santa. Ho, 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 ho. Thank you for Cheers. your time. Merry Christmas. This next song is on our most recent album that you can pick up over there at our illustrious merch stand. The song's called Strawman. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Strawman, 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 strawman,
Adoration is a Belgian strong dark ale from the Omagong Brewery in Cooperstown, New York. Besides the dark multi flavor expected with strong dark ales, Adoration also features coriander, orange peel, mace, cardamom, and grains of paradise. It has an ABV of 10%, an IBU of 26, Beer Advocate rates it at 91, Rated Beer rates it at 96. So, this is actually a bottle from 2011, so it's got a little bit of age. Interested to try it. Yeah, uh, Adoration, I believe, is a Belgian strong dark, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, and I like a lot of Omegon. What is the uh, Greek philosopher? is amazing. Their Abbey is really good, so I'm really excited to try this one. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a Belgian strong dark. It's got a like almost like a dark cranberry, opaque color. Yeah. Uh, I can see the carbonation shooting up the sides really crazy, which I guess is typical in Belgians. I got a lot of yeast settling on mine, but I got the last bit of it, which is good. Um, the, the head settled down a little bit, but we used to have a little bit. Yeah. It's uh, like a nice, like, uh, burgundy color, which is really nice. I mean, it looks like a typical one. I mean, four out of five, it looks really nice. Okay. Smell. This smells like Omega. If you're familiar with the Omega stuff, like it's definitely has that Omega kind of characteristic to it. Yeah, I think like, um, kind of like Unibrew, I think they use a unique yeast that yeah. they keep reusing. Um, but it does have a typical like, uh, fruity bread right. and smell to it. Very bready, very mm -hmm. bready. Yeah, multi bready, which I love. Front. You got that like fig, uh, like a uh, raisin smell, yeah. uh, spice, a little spice, not exceptionally crazy on spice. With them, it's probably that star and anise. I know they use that in a lot of their stuff. Do they? Okay. Flavor, but, yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I honestly didn't think there was liquor smell, but yeah, I think there is. I mean, it's, I'm, I just thought, you know, thinking about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning something here. That's nice. I like it a lot. It smells really good. Um, Four out of five as well. It's a it's an easy number to go to, but it smells great. But the three would be giving it down. Yeah, you shouldn't give out too many fives. Five like it's as good as it's gonna get. Which there's gonna be a couple of those, but yeah, yeah. four or five is about a physical. Room for is good. Taste. No, cheers. cheers. There you go. Hey, 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 I caught you. Caught me. Man, that's interesting. Um, a little more bitter than I originally expected. Yeah. It's a good bitter, but I, I was just thinking like a lot of these are super sweet, yeah. and I like it because um, a lot of these Abbey style ales are just unbearably sweet to me. Yeah. So I like that initially. Um, after that bitterness comes, this sort of like a spiciness, fruit, breadiness, and it's really yeah. tasty. I mean, the the tail end of this one is where for me it really kicks into gear. Like I said, you get a little bit of that bitter up front, but then it does get sweet as the time goes on. Yeah, it's, it's like. It's, it's like a really weird good. scale that it's on. It's well, it's kind of what's kind of missing though, and I don't know, maybe it's partly because it's aged, is the Christmas aspect. Usually, there's some sort of kind of like that bouquet-y, floral kind of 
you know, and maybe that's not all Christmas styles. Again, I'm, I'm kind of new to that style, but yeah. I, I wouldn't call this a Christmas beer. If you just pop this in front of me, I'm like, yeah, it's a pretty good ab beer, a pretty good strong dark. I don't get much. I think it has the Christmas aspect of the warmness. It warms me up a little bit. Like it's um, like it's almost like a heavy winter warmer, which is typical in Christmas beers. I think I like it. I think it has that, but it could be like you said, it might not be as winter-ish because it's been aged so long. Yeah, who knows. Um, it's tasty though. It's really good. Tasty with the rating. Yeah, I typically like the um, Three Philosophers, but I actually like this a little better than Three Philosophers because Three Philosophers has just a little too much of that licorice, and I hate licorice. For some reason, I just never been into it. But when it's in beer in minimal amounts, it, it's okay. But theirs is just a little on that side with a little much, so I kind of prefer this over it. Yeah, Three it's got a. I, I like licorice. It has a little bit in there, which is just enough to give it that twang. Um, I'm not gonna give it a four. I'm not gonna give it a five because I like some. Because we're against strong darks. I'm gonna do four and a half. Okay. Um, it's super tasty. I yeah. love it, man. It's, even in September, as hot as it is in Florida, like 90 right now. Yeah. I would drink this outside even. It's tasty. How do you about the mouthfeel? Um, one more taste. I'll let you know. Ooh. It just coats the mouth nicely. It doesn't. It's just like it's like drinking candy almost. The mouthfeel. I love that. It's like. If I was drinking like a nice uh, rum raisin candy or something, I don't know. It's, I love it. I, I'm gonna give that a five. It's so good. Awesome. So overall, how do you feel about Omegon's adoration? Well, I got a four, 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 four and a half, and a five. Yeah. So that puts it four point two five. Four point two five. Four and a half. Whatever. Let's go up. It's good. So I'm gonna recommend this to anybody. So on, a, on my scale, of one to ten. Again, I I really enjoy the style. Strong darks, doubles, quads. Um, I'm gonna give this a nine. I mean, it's pretty damn good. There's a little more room for improvement. Again, my, my big knock on it is I'm not really getting much of the, the Christmas, you know, kind of the holiday winter feel from it. Again, maybe it's because it's aged and some of the sweetness is just kind of taken over. Maybe we've lost some that. Either way, solid beer all day long. Nine, two thumbs up. There you go. So there it is. Omegon Adoration. Corsendon Christmas Ale is a Belgian strong dark ale brewed by the brewery Corsendon out of Oud Turnhout, Belgium. Corson Dawn Christmas Ale is marketed as being predominantly malty with smoky and citrus notes. It has an ABV of 8.5%, an IBU of 25, Beer Advocate rates it at 93, Rated Beer rates it at 98. Here we go. Thanks, sir. That's pretty great dark. And it's got a nice ruby, dark ruby color. It looks yeah. beautiful. You can see through it, but it's a little darker than, than typical uh, quads, I would say. Yeah. Uh, nice burgundy colored head again. Um, it looks really nice, a four or five for me. How does it smell? It's a nice, like, spicy, sweet, kind of tart candy to it. Mm -hmm. smell. Um, not really as fruity as I expected. Yeah. Um, I like it though. Yeah, not quite as pungent as some of your other ones, but yeah. definitely there's some smell there. Yeah. Like a more crowd pleasing quad. If you think about it. like if you've yeah. never had someone drink a quad and say, hey, try this, they might like it a little more. Typical, like in Ross for St. Bernard. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and give it a taste and then I can make that determination. But from the smell, it smell, uh, does smell a little lighter. But a little lighter, four to five as well. Okay. Um, maybe a little, uh, four to five. Right. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. That is just smooth and easy to drink. Very smooth. There, there's very little kind of aftertaste. Usually these quads have that really big back end of like breadiness and sweetness and that's not really here in this beer. Yeah, it's um it's a little refreshing for me, like I'm not, in a good way. Like yeah. a lot of these heavy heavy quads, it's like drain to drink them. I mean I love them, but at the yeah. same point like September in Florida, it's like man, it's so hard. I could drink this one year round. Yeah, and it's time. weird. It, it's a winter ale, but we're kinda of talking about drinking it in the summer. Yeah. You know? It's refreshing yeah. for a summer beer, so Again, I don't know if that's conflicting. Should it taste like that? But yeah. uh, the most crowd pleasing quad I've ever tasted, I'll say that. Okay, yeah, I can agree with that. So for taste, what do you want to give it? Um, since we're going against quads, and a quad is supposed to be a certain style with that heaviness, I will we'll give it a 3 out of 5 on taste. Okay. But it is a Christmas. It is a Christmas. Um, I've had, again, a lot. I've had a good amount of Christmases. I still think it falls in the 3 out of 5 okay. range. Fair enough. Um, it should have a little more of that fruity notes and spicy notes. This smell is more spicy than the flavor. Yeah, I like it, but I was expecting more personally. All right, let's go to the mouthfeel. Um, 
it's really like crisp, bouncy off the tongue. Um, it's a little, yeah, I mean, again, against a quad, it's a little bit of a, not a letdown, but just not what I was expecting. Again, it's also a winter warmer, yeah. a really heavy one. It's, it's hard to say, but I'm going to give this an, also a 3 out of 5. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, like it just kind of it falls flat. There really isn't much to it. Once it goes in your mouth and you swallow, it really isn't that big, bready, big sweetness you would expect kind of from a Belgian kind of quad. Again, it's winter. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little laggy. Yeah, it just goes away quickly. All right, so overall, how do you like it? Um, well, I gave it, what, two fours and two threes, so I guess that puts it right about three and a half. Yeah, you know, I'm not half. doing math in his head, but uh, four, three, four, five, five, two. <laughs> there you go. Sounds good. So that's, uh, I'm going to give it a three and a half out of five. I would recommend it for a winter beer. I mean, it's tasty, but it's just for what a quad is, I think it's, it's that's room for improvement for sure. All right, my scale of one to ten, I'm going to go ahead and give this a seven and a half. Nothing terrible, but nothing outstanding. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Belgian styles, and to me, this kind of falls in a flat. I do think it's a little more uh, open to people. Like, so you've never really had quads to be one I'd probably start you with, like John was saying. But for me, you know, like if you like the beers that I like and you like quads, you're probably gonna be a little disappointed with this one. I don't, I don't get much of the winter at Christmas. I'm not getting yeah. much of the Belgian or the quads. So That's what I'm of, really gonna say is that for a Christmas beer, I really expected more spice, and I think that to me is where it left me down the most. Yeah, I want more spice in the beer. So seven and a half. Good beer, but um, nothing I'm going to go and, and just run around town screaming, you got to try this. All right, so that's going to wrap up episode five here at Mermaid Juice. want to say a thank you to Dano for inviting us out, man. We had a great time. Thanks for the hospitality, man. You're an awesome dude. Anybody who has a chance, come check out Mermaid Juice in Mount Dora, and you won't be sorry. Yeah, I had a great time myself, too. And uh, next episode, we're going to be at the Arcade Bar Bart, where we'll be drinking some great beer, throwing down on the Arcade Challenge, and see who's the better old school player on me and him. That's me. And uh, <laughs> had a great time, man. See you All right, guys. Until next time, latest. This is John. What are you looking at? <laughs> Fucking snake. Oh. <laughs> you have me look at paintings that he said that. <laughs> the blooper reel. This is one of the blooper reel for yeah. season one DVD. Fucking paintings and shit now.